Okay, today this little video is going to be a, a quick review of the concept of apparent depth. And uh, hopefully I'll have time also to talk about a second concept known as dispersion. Now apparent depth, I'm going to spend a little more time on. Well, dispersion is a fairly simple idea, so maybe I'll just end it at the end of this video and throw it in. So until then, let's take a look at what I've got drawn here. Now I have a a guy sitting on a on the dock, sometimes known as a pier. It's just sort of a little wooden platform that stands out into the water, and I've got the the water below, and I've got the air above, and uh, this guy here is he wants to throw a spear at the fish down here. He wants to catch his fish. Now the question is is uh, if uh, where should he aim? Where should he aim to try to hit the fish? Now, what that ends up is asking ourselves, uh, where exactly does he think the fish is right now? Now, let's just think about that, okay? Um, let's say, um, in order for him to see him, of course, now, the light that is bouncing out the fish must reach his eyes. So, let's just, for a moment, uh, take a look and see what that would be. So, what do we have? We have, so here's the light ray, and does it go all the way to his eyes? And that would be him seeing the fish. But at this point now, I'm sure most of you realize that this is not going to happen. At least it's not going to, we're not going to see that light move in a straight line because that's, that's not going to be happening because we are moving from a, a, medium that is very dense has a what we call a high optical density so let's just um let's just say we got an n here of about 1.5 and we're moving into air which is has a an index of refraction of about 1.0 and when we do that we know what's going to happen is that the light is going to speed up it's going to speed up so he's not going to be looking straight in. The light from this fish going straight towards him is going to end up bending. Now let's try to remember where that's going to go. Uh, let's make our little normal line here. Uh, something like that. That's not a very good normal line, but you get the idea here. I'll just, just make it a little dotted here. There we go. So if I was looking at this, I would say, well, here's my, um, here's my incident angle. And then this is my uh, transmitted angle. And we know that if we are going to go into a medium that is got a lower index of refraction, in other words, I'm moving into a less dense, less optically dense material, my transmitted wave uh, angle will become larger because my wave is speeding up. So really what I should be drawing, and I'm just going to see if I can't just simply do this here like this. Let me see. Let me see if I can do this. It's going to bend. It's going to bend. And that's going to, let's see, bend away from the normal. It's going to bend away from the normal. So what do I got here? Well, I'm basically the, the light that is moving uh, away from the fish directly towards him is actually going to get bent away. He doesn't see unless he wants to crouch down at the bottom of the dock. He's not going to see this light coming from the fish. So if we think about that, he's actually going to see light that comes a little bit earlier because if you think about this, okay, well, let's just change this a little bit. Let's say the light that's coming here. Now I would say, well, that's not going to, that's not going to reach his eyes. That's going to go right up into the sky. Well, wait a minute now. Of course, it. let's be careful about what we're saying here. Because that light will, of course, bend. It will bend just like the other one. And so there's my normal. There's my normal. And I know that my, there's my, let's just do it slowly here. But I'll have a incident angle and I'll have my transmitted angle as always. And then here, I'll just, let me just do it again. Here, I've got to be a little careful this time. Mm -hmm. Let's just realize that it is moving once again into a 
less dense medium, it will have a larger angle. Now I'm just going to make this perfect so that everything's lovely. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't worked out the math, so we haven't, we haven't done this perfectly. If we wanted to, we could find out exactly what would be the right spot that would get us uh, connecting. Uh, but for now, for now, we're just going to, well, we're going to do a little bit of cheating so that we can just get the idea right. Uh, this light is yet it's now the transmitted angle of course as i said will be bigger uh, i've made it really bigger here but you get the idea and then um i should probably draw this line out further this this light ray will continue on more or less towards his eye so when he looks through along this site towards the water around here he's going to see the fish because that light ray has now bent towards him now let's ask ourselves when you when you look at something do you realize that the light is bending we really don't think about it for example um, picture yourself looking in a mirror when you look in a mirror you're not thinking oh that is light that is now uh, bounced off of the mirror towards me that light is actually bent at an angle of reflection what you really think you're looking at is that you see another one of you inside the mirror and and that's reasonable to think that you think the image is inside the mirror because the light is a straight line and I'm looking straight towards that thing now this person's going to do the same thing too he's going to assume that this light ray coming along to the water is continuing straight straight so let's just think about that for a moment. What is he thinking he's going to see? So let's just continue. Let's just say we're going to continue this light ray as well as we can. And I'm going to try to, I'm just doing this with my eyes here, but uh, more or less, I think that looks pretty good. The light ray is continuing this way. So he thinks the fish is along this line of this light ray's path. So how do I figure out where he thinks the fish is? Well, when we're doing apparent depth, what's nice about this is that we know that uh, the fish is just simply going to be somewhere along this vertical line from where his uh, eyes are. In other words, all we need to do to find out the apparent depth. Now remember, this is a apparent depth. The fish is actually here. But that's not where he thinks it is. So let's just take um, a quick, hor uh, sorry, not horizontal vertical line straight up I'll try to make this nice and straight let me just draw this again uh, from let's say the that point on the fish that that we hit like that so I've made a vertical line and now where it has intersected where it is intersected with the new line right here that is the new spot for the fish so how do I how do I do this well I'm gonna make this easier on myself I'm gonna I'm gonna take this fish I'm gonna copy and paste so copy paste there's another fish let me just see here's the fish kind of in the same exact same spot but now what he thinks is is that the fish is up right there so let's just make this kind of like a little faded so you can kind of get an idea. So what we have here is a difference of opinion. The fish knows he's down here, but the guy is going to say, no, 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 no. This is the, um, oops, let me just do that again here. Let's try that again. Uh, I should make that a little darker. There we go. This is the apparent, the apparent depth of the fish. Now think about what I did. I drew the lines of where I think the, uh, the fish is. Knowing uh, that the angle of instance is going to be changed here. Remember, we are using Snell's law. We are using ni sine theta i equals the transmitted index refraction times the sine of the angle of the transmitted. And if you think about it, there's a, there's a few things you know. You can probably figure out uh, what the actual uh, angle is going to be you could probably figure out where this should be 
um, if you know some distances, if I knew the length of, for example, uh, the, the distance from the eye directly to the fish, that would be this line. I've actually made a triangle. And so if I think about it, maybe uh, that would be a really interesting uh, test question. Exactly where is that fish? But normally, if I was going to do this in a, in a test, I would ask you as a um, sort of more of a sketch. Just give me an idea that you know um, why. What's going to happen? The, the man is going to try to throw a spear. He's going to try to throw a spear, and he's going to try to throw it uh, right here. He's going to try to hit that fish. He's going to miss the fish, which is why, actually, uh, th this spear fishing, actually, this is known as spear fishing. This is why it's actually so hard. Is because when you're looking into the water, you're actually looking at the fish in the wrong place. You, you're not actually looking at it properly. Now, um, there's a few other things to think about, too. Um, let's consider why the fish doesn't run away sometimes. Let's just get rid of some of this here. Ooh, not too much. Because picture, maybe, um, if you want, that the fish now is um, coming up. He's swimming along and you're, you're going to attack the fish when it gets like, uh, pretty close, pretty close. And what you want to ask yourself is, uh, can the fish actually see the man? Now that's kind of an interesting question is, is there a point where someone cannot see someone else? I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. I'm not going to answer that question uh, here, but is there a point where whoops whoa everybody's moving now is there a point where uh the fish is unable to be seen or can't see the guy outside the water you want to think about that at a certain point what would be the situation is there a point where you would not well maybe if you're underneath the wood yeah no you can't see it but if you're over here or if you're over here is there a point where the light from the fish is never going to reach the eye? That's an interesting question. That's a really interesting question. I want you to think about that at some point and see if you can come up with an answer for me. But that's the concept of apparent depth. So let's have a quick word about dispersion. We might as well talk about it right now. Now dispersion goes all the way back to Newton. Uh, now, don't get confused. This is not diffraction. This is a, this is a different concept, and it's only uh, used when we talk about light. You can see an example of it right here. This is the situation where somehow I'm able to take white light and turn it into all the colors of the rainbow. And the question is, is well, how does that happen? And there's actually some pretty easy to understand ideas behind that. So I just want to look at that together and make sure you know about that before our next class. So let's just consider what we have here. Okay. In fact, I'm going to pop this up onto uh, Photoshop for a sec. Okay. That's better. Okay. So what I want you to think about here is, um, we've only talked about some of the issues of refraction. Uh, we have a basic idea that there's a relationship between the index of refraction of a material and the index of refraction of the material it's coming from. And we have Snell's law and therefore we pretty much uh, have a basic relationship between those things. But th the story is a little more complicated really. And the fact is, is that the index of refraction of a material depends upon the wavelength of that light. In other words, uh, different wavelengths of light will speed up or slow down differently from each other. It is not the same for all different wavelengths of light. And even to the point of different colors, which is actually, they're very close to each other, yet still you will find that the different colors will speed up or slow down differently from each other. And if we look at this, let's just take a look now. Red light has a N value of 1.5, where violet light has an N value, now we're talking about in glass, of 1.55. Now, it seems like a not too much difference, but it's enough. It's enough to, to make 
um, a change. Now let's just think about what this means, okay? Now let's just assume um, I'm going to look at uh, let's look at red first. Now let's assume red is going to refract here. Now it's moving into a material that is glass. It is 1.5, so therefore it is going to uh, slow down some amount, which means whoops. I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. Whoa! I want a nice, beautiful line. What am I doing here? Sorry, guys try that again I'm gonna back up a bit now I'm on my new layer I'm gonna take out a line ooh that's better okay I got this now so I'm gonna make a little line it's gonna be uh, it's gonna bend a bit let's just say that much and I think we can safely say that the angle here is oh, a little a little bit bigger than this one it's gonna bend but not too much maybe I should have made that a little bit better let me let me go a little bit more just to be very clear okay so we'll say that much now now let's consider what's going to happen for uh, violet or rather purple light now that's the other end of the rainbow now just in case we don't remember it's red orange yellow green blue now this is in English we usually say biv now why what are these things now this is red orange yellow green blue now indigo which is actually just simply sort of a purple also but we do include it it's it's how i always learned it indigo and then violet which violet is just another word for purple so when you look at a rainbow it must follow those uh, that order um, and usually you'll hear people uh, my age or, or maybe even a little bit younger going roy g biv roy g biv is the the way to remember the order of all the colors so if you just hear the words Roy G Biv then you know it's red orange yellow green blue indigo violet and and that's the colors you see so remember that um, if you think about it red red is gonna have a wavelength of some amount and violet is gonna have some sort of wavelength we'll say wavelength of violent wavelength of red and if you remember red is closer to the larger wavelengths the lower energy and so we're going to have something like this we have a wavelength that is bigger for red and smaller for violet and for some reason uh, as it turns out uh, you do not slow down as much if you have a larger wavelength um, you're or it could be related to the frequency i guess um, i should be a little more specific about that now let's just look now so if violet has now a, a n value of 1.55 it will also uh, it will also refract but it's going to refract more it's going to refract more than than the red because it's because the index is larger it's going to slow down more okay so let's think about that it's going to slow down more now when i come out now it's going to once again it's going to change and also more dramatically again more dramatically again so let's just take a look at that and see how i want to draw that um i have to very carefully draw my normal lines here let's just say that looks pretty good it's not the best i know i'm trying my best here um, let's just make them into dotted lines so it's a little more obvious there's my normal and there's the normal for my uh, purple and so now we're going in the opposite direction now we're coming from a um, uh, optically dense material back into air and so now this is going to get uh, bigger this 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 transmit angle will be bigger so it's going to go down like that there's my red but my purple now is going to go but it's going to go even more even more so it's going to look like that so as you can see what happens is that the paths of the different wavelengths of light are now separated it's as if they separated and if i looked at all the ones in the middle now red yellow is also going to go through this but it's going to be a little bit less than uh red and it's going to go off like that uh green we might as well draw in green why not let's get green in there green's also going to do that but it's going to refract a little bit more and then lastly somewhere in there is going to be blue we'll put blue there too blue is going to end up something like that 
So what you're going to end up is that what was originally just all white light moving in a straight line together, because of refraction, they get separated from each other because they have a different index of refraction only because of the different wavelengths. That's it. And so this is something Newton found. He found that, wow, look at that. The, the entire thing uh, will separate into the separate colors. So white light must be all of those together. We have uh, an addition of all the different colors together to get us that white light. We talked about that before. An, an additional color creation. Now, just to finish off on this, uh, when we're talking about this, I just want to add one last thing. And that's like, well, um, we all have seen a rainbow. So how exactly does that work? How does the rainbow work? Well, it's a little more complicated, but still not that complicated. It's still we're talking about dispersion. So let's just follow this. A rainbow is only going to happen when there is a lot of water in the air. So this is why it usually happens after or even during a, a rainstorm or any kind of shower that is happening. And so if you look at this, the white light will come across. It will disperse inside the raindrop. It also, look at that, it's going to have total internal reflection because the raindrop is a circle. And so if we looked at this, we would see, okay, just... Taking a moment, we notice that the angle, our uh, our angle is big enough where we have total internal reflection inside the raindrop, so it bounces back. So this is another interesting thing, because what this tells me is that when I'm looking at a rainbow, the light that is coming to the raindrops has to be coming from behind me. You'll notice this when you're looking at rainbows. You need to have the sun behind you to see the rainbow. Otherwise, this is not going to happen. It just doesn't happen. So we have a really kind of interesting situation happen where then it bends. And look at that. Because of the way it bends, you can tell, you notice the red actually ends up on the bottom. The violet ends up on the top. Okay. All right. But we have to be a little more careful about this because, all right, do I just then see all the separate colors coming all from the same raindrop? No. Because as you get farther and farther away, these lines are going to spread out more and more. Which means, and let's just take a look at that. Let's just follow a red line. Here's a red one. Da, 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 da. Red comes down, hits your eye. Okay, so all the raindrops that are way up high, you're seeing red. And then if I look at these raindrops, so okay, the red still comes down. Same. It is Notice it's parallel to the other red line. But... Because it's spreading out so much, it's not reaching your eye. You're not seeing red coming from this raindrop because the red now is way too low. But if you look up here, okay, wait a minute. Let's look at, uh, for example, purple. Uh, purple comes and bounces here and then comes right across. Oh, you don't see the purple from above. The angle is just too low. It doesn't refract enough down so that you can see it. But rainbow uh not sorry not rainbow raindrops that are more closer to your height closer to height, or at least closer to you uh vertically you will see the purple from that raindrop so this raindrop this second one down here looks purple the one above looks red and uh in the middle you're going to see some that look blue you're going to have some layers that look green and some layers that look yellow and so what's going to happen is that a rainbow will always and i mean always always be going purple then blue then green then yellow then orange then red at the bottom this is the way a rainbow is always going to look you're never going to see it the other way around because it's not possible unless of course i guess the sun was hanging out below your feet which is not going to happen so you're always getting the sun coming from above which means you're always getting the white light coming from above like this bounce and then bounces back to your eye so dispersion allows you to see a rainbow in the sky now i want you to just go back and look at this video again if you're not so sure about any of these concepts i'm not teaching it in class so this is something that uh you should treat seriously as homework because I guarantee, I guarantee that these kind of questions are showing up on upcoming tests. So uh, if you have any more questions, of course, please ask me. I'll be happy to help you. Okay, and that's dispersion 
and apparent depth.